Hello students. So this is your teacher, McKendro, and I hope that you all are doing great over there back home. Last time I taught you about the present indefinite tense and I hope that you have understood and learned what I have taught you in the last class. Today I will be dealing with the second tense which is called the present continuous tense. And I hope that you are going to enjoy this or learn everything whatever I will be giving you today. So please take your notebook or notepad and write them down or if possible just take the snapshot of those whatever I will be teaching you today. So present continuous tense as you could just see on screen right now the meaning or the definition of present continuous tense is there on your screen. The task that is happening at the moment or ongoing is known as present continuous tense. Okay? Whatever task is actually happening at that exact moment or you would say which is ongoing at that same moment, those are considered as present continuous tense. Let me just explain you. The present continuous tense. See, here, if we talk in terms of subject, do you remember what is subject? Yes, the singular number and the plural numbers are actually called or considered as the subject. Verb plus object. Okay? This is actually the criteria or you would say I mean like uh, in a systematic way it has to be formed. Subject means the singular or plural number. He, she, it and I, you. They are what? The singular numbers. Okay? And we, they. They are actually the plural numbers. Do you remember them when I taught you in the last class? Yes. So he, she, it, I, you, they are all singular number. Okay, singular number. And the next one, we, they, they are plural number. Okay. Here, the about the subject, why it has to be taught? Because this is the main part where you have to start, I mean like framing the sentence. You need a subject to frame a sentence. Without the subject, you cannot frame a sentence. So you could use all this one, he, she, it, I, you, or we, they. Verb, we are talking about present continuous tense over here, okay? The present continuous tense. In short, I have written it for you. Present continuous tense. We are talking about that right now. So, verb. Here, the verb is going to be the fourth form of verb will be used here. I am repeating. Here, the verb is going to be the fourth form that is the present participle. Where you have to add ing with the verb. Okay ing with the verb. Now remember what was actually the verb? Yeah, I told you. Something which is being done by the part of your body or by yourself, activity or action. Those whenever you are doing all those, those are actually called the verb. Okay? Like for example, let, just, let me just give you some example. Talk, speak, call, ask. Okay? There are so many words. They, they are verbs, right? So, you will have to use or add ing here in this present continuous tense. Remember, this is the second tense which we are learning at the moment. Okay? The last one was present indefinite tense and I hope that you have understood that. If not, then I'll tell you more about that later. But today, you have to Focus on what I'm teaching right now. 
the present continuous tense. Okay? Why it is important for you to learn all these tenses? Because you will be getting to know how to actually frame sentences. And without this subject, verb, and object, the sentence cannot be framed properly. Okay? So here I'm talking about the present continuous tense. Okay? So the verb here, which is going to be used, is actually the present participle. Okay? Present participle is actually the fourth form of the verb. I think I told you about that. The present participle. Here, this one is considered as the fourth form of the tense, of the verb also. Okay? The fourth form of the verb is present participle, where you have to add ing with that particular verb. Like here, talking, speaking, okay? calling, and asking. Okay? So, like that, there are so many verbs where you can add ing whenever we are learning or talking in terms of the present continuous tense. I hope that you have understand this much. Okay? Talking, speaking, calling, asking. There are so many words like uh, shouting. There is, a, there, is, there is an ing over there, right? Shouting, pulling, standing. Okay? All those verbs, whenever you are adding ing with that, those particular verb or word are called the present participle. Got it? Okay. So, here I am going to frame some sentences for you and then you will find out that how you have to actually, you know, write them properly. Okay. Suppose if I am talking about a girl. Okay. If I am talking about a girl. Girl means what you will have to use, which number you are going to use, which subject are you going to use for that particular girl or female? She, right? She. She is one of the singular number, one of the singular numbers, okay? Singular numbers, okay? It is one of the singular numbers, she. Because I'm talking about a girl here. Okay. Here, this girl is doing something. What is she doing? She play. Okay. Okay. What is she playing? Uh, say, badminton. Okay, badminton. She is playing badminton. Now, this one is not completed. According to the present continuous tense, it shouldn't be like this. So what has come along with she then? It is is which is missing. Okay. She is play. Remember I told you that uh, we are dealing with present continuous tense over there. So you will have to add ing with the verb. So here will become ing. She is playing badminton okay it did the same thing for he also he again you have to use this is what he is playing you can write playing cricket in the sense actually this is the thing some, this, these are the examples of how you have to frame those sentences. Okay, I mean like uh, these are made according to the time and situation whenever you are talking to someone, whenever you are narrating about something. Okay, so this is the idea of how to frame the sentences. Okay, now I know that you are not able to understand them because uh, I'm going fast. But let me just like slow it down for you so that you will be able to understand more. Okay? I just want you to understand. We have used he and she here. She and he already we have used here. Okay? Now what is left? Which numbers are left? 
I, V, U, D. Okay, the singular number and the plural number as well. Are you getting me what I'm saying? She, he, I, you, they are all singular number, but we, they, they are plural numbers, okay? Uh, don't get confused with that one because this is just simple as that. Whenever we are talking about a single person, she is a single person, he is also again the same, I and you. These four subjects, she, he, I, you, they are actually singular because they are single. Okay, and the same thing for here, we, they. We means whenever we, we, are, we are talking in terms of more than one person. We, two people, three people, okay? So we, they, if we're talking about those people who are actually the subject. Okay, we and they, they are known as the plural numbers. That's why they are known as the plural numbers. Okay. So, she is playing badminton, he is playing cricket. For I, what you'll have to use, you know? M. Playing cricket. Okay. Here, this one you have to change. With I, it has to be M. And with V, it has to be R. Okay. And you, it has to be R. And they, it has to be R again here. Okay. And you can use this as one of the examples there for them. I am playing cricket. We are playing cricket. You are playing cricket. Or they are playing cricket. Okay. I have uh, not written them over here because you can write anything over here according to the time and situation of your choice whenever you want to you know write something over there you can replace this by uh, you can even i mean like i am eat ting i'm eating mango you can write like this okay here we are come on you can try it we are we are going we are going, where are you going? To the market. We are going to the market. You just cannot simply say that we are going market, okay, because that would be wrong. You just have to use uh, the preposition at least. Two is preposition. Whenever you are moving towards somewhere, you have to use two, okay? We are going to the market. You are, okay? You are uh, crying, and you don't have to add anything over here. If you say you are crying, that's it. You don't have to add. If you need to add something over there, you are crying because you failed. You can write like that. Also, you can also use that word. You are crying because you failed, or you are crying because you, uh, you know, you didn't go to the, you didn't go for the movie. There are so many examples for that. You are crying. Here we have used ing. They are coming. Come is actually a verb. Here, according to the present continuous tense, it's coming. We are coming where? We are coming tomorrow to your place. Okay. Now, let me elaborate more because I know that you are not able to understand. Some of you are not able to understand and some of you have understood that, but let me make it more simple, okay? By doing that one, you'll get to know. I just want you to look at that table right now, okay? Is that there on your screen now? Yes, I think you could see that. That's a table for the present continuous tense. And those are the term or the example which will be used to help you out to frame sentences. Okay. Remember I told you earlier about those statements. The statements say we have got 
three types of statements whenever we are talking whenever we are writing we have those statements the positive statement the negative statement and the interrogative statement i have been telling you this many times and i'm not going to get tired to tell you more positive statement is whenever you are assure of something that's called positive statement whenever you are assure of something about something okay those are called positive statements negative statement whenever you are not sure okay you are or you will be using no or not those are considered to be the negative statement interrogative statement interrogative statement whenever you are inquiring whenever you are asking questions those are called the interrogative statement all right for positive statement look at the table he she it plus is that has to be used along with the singular number okay the he she it is a singular number they are singular numbers actually and uh, you are supposed to use is along with those plus the fourth form of the verb and what was the fourth form i told you what was the name of it the present participle where you, where you have to add ing with the verb okay and when we talk in terms of singular number and plural number you would see that that i has to come along with m i am i plus m it's given there right on the table look at that it's given over there right in that table let's have a look at that i plus m v u they plus r whenever we are talking in terms of v u they r you have to use not m it just m only we will be used over there with the subject i okay so i plus m i am v u they plus r v r u r or they are plus the fourth form of the verb the present participle the ing which is supposed to be added with that particular verb okay that was for the positive statement negative statement he she it plus again is plus not as i told you but no and not whenever you are not sure of something that's called the negative statement okay there you will be using no or not right and again with the fourth form of the verb the next one i again with the m i am we you they are plus not we are not you are not they are not plus fourth form that is the present participle the ing which will be added with that verb over there for that one negative statement okay next one interrogative statement whenever you are asking question inquiring is you have to begin writing that word actually is okay before if somebody you have to ask someone if you have to ask someone then you'll have to ask like this is she coming tomorrow like that okay is will be coming over there and then along with that he she it the subject the singular numbers and plus the fourth form of verb the ing added one and the next one is m whenever we are talking about the subject i m will be the first to be seen over there whenever you are framing that sentence am i doing it for example am i scaring you okay like that and r plus v u they plus fourth form of verb i think that is helping you out the table there okay let's come up with the examples there as you could see the examples which are there he 
or she is eating what he and she is doing they are eating what they're eating they're eating rice they're eating anything they want here eat is actually the verb and if you are using ing with that it becomes the fourth form of verb and that is actually the present participle didn't i tell you that yeah i told you that okay eating the fourth form and if we are talking about he she it those are the singular number and whenever we are talking about we they they are the plural number plus the singular number again with i u okay so those will be also used but they will be having different you know uh, whenever you're using i whenever you're using u i plus m u we they plus r you are we are eating or they are eating rice okay but if you don't want to eat i will say i am not eating rice or he is not eating rice or she is not eating rice or we are not eating rice or they are not eating rice this is how you have to do according to the table over there got it okay again with that integrative statement those are just the example i think you have got it right now the example of integrative statement over there is she eating rice now in bracket that means we are talking about just the moment which is happening right now okay am i eating or are we eating or are you eating or are they eating okay so you'll have to understand this and i know i know it's difficult actually what you have to do you know just as simple as that you need to speak yes you need to speak in english you need to open your mouth because until and unless if you don't do it you will not learn for that what you have to do you have to open your mouth speak to someone who knows or if you don't know anyone or if you have no one to speak with you in english just speak to yourself in front of the mirror stand in front of the mirror speak to yourself in english and then you will see your expression also that how you are talking to yourself and the best way is what you know pick some books read them read some story books they will give you a lot of vocabulary over there a lot of word that you will understand and you will be if you are having the habit of reading then definitely you will be developing your speaking skills and writing skills in english as well so move on to the next one it's actually the table of practice what are those the table of practice okay now you must be confused that what is table of practice actually over there see it just if you could look at the table there the first column it's about the subject okay you you can use any subject over there like if you want to use i we you they he she it that's up to you okay that's up to you but remember you just have to use those subject which are there actually the subject the subject which are there like the i we you they and he she it okay as you could see the second column over there it's about the verb verb of any form okay see why i'm telling you and why i'm showing you that one because that will help you out to actually use those particular terms and you will be able to frame those sentences according to those tenses like the present indefinite the one i taught you the last time and right now the present continuous tense and in the third column you would see what is written over there actually that is asking that what think you are going to do what think you are talking about what think is going to happen all these things is written for just for you then you will understand that how you have to frame sentences that is actually the table which i have made for you 
where, when, why, how, who. Okay, and uh, it is again according to the time and situation and those which are not applicable, applicable, you don't have to write them, you don't have to do anything with that one. So let's just move on to the first example which is given over there. See, as I show you the first column over there, the V, right? V is one of the subjects over there, the plural number, right? The plural number, yes, V. And we have used go over there. We, in the second column, go what? We go what? We go to school. We go to school. Where? If you want, you can write something over there. We go to school. Where do you go to school? Nearby. Nearby to my house. We go to school nearby to my house. You could say that. You could write that. But here, I don't think so that was applicable for me. So that's why I have left that column for you empty. Okay? So we go to school every day. When? Every day. That's a regular or routinely work which we are doing. It's just the example that is being shown over there for you in that table. The next column, it has been left empty for you because it's not necessary to uh, write something over there. Why? Because it's understood. Why, why, why do you want to go to school? Why do you go to school? To learn, right? To study. You go to school because you want to study, you want to learn. So if is it necessary, you can write that. And if it doesn't, if it's not, if it's not necessary, so you don't have to. You don't have to write that. How you're going? By bus. Understood? This is how you have to use this table over here for practicing. So uh, take up your mobile phone and just take the snaps out of that one so that you will be doing your own sentences over there with the help of that one. So we go to school every day by bus is actually, which tense we are talking about here? The present indefinite tense, the first tense which I taught you in the last one, in the part three, present indefinite tense, which happens every day, which happens routinely, okay? Those are called the present indefinite tense. We go to school every day by bus. Yeah, we do. We go to school every day by bus. Isn't it you're doing? Now, exactly you don't because uh, it's just the lockdown and all those things. I mean, COVID-19, just because of that, you just have to stay back home. But normally, whenever you will be like started to, going, started to go to school, then you can use that word. We go to school every day by bus. Move on to the next one, example. He, see, those are the example of the present indefinite tense. He, and why it is S over there with it? It is the first form. Remember the stem. I told you, the first form or the main current word. Hello, remember? Present tense. Yes, the present tense. Or the main current verb or the stem. Okay. Why S is added along with that it? Because that's the rule, right? I also taught you about that last time in the part three one. So whenever, if we are talking in terms of present indefinite tense, and if is it about the singular number, he, she, it, then you will have to add S along with the verb the first form of verb with an S, S, okay, with an S. Okay, so uh, you can have a look at those examples over there and then you can uh, create your own or you can frame your own sentence with the help of this table. So uh, don't forget, just take the snaps out of this table right now. So that will help you out to actually frame sentences, okay? Do it right now, just take the snaps out of this one. Okay, so uh, move on to the next one, assignments. So those are the assignments right now for you that you have to do, okay? Uh, see, I have uh, already taught you the present indefinite tense, that, that the first tense, and the present continuous which I taught you today. So those are the assignments. What you have to 
do is you have to find out these things. The statement, forms of verb, tense, subject, whether it's singular number or plural number. Okay, you have to find out the following in the given assignments. And just take the snapshot of that one right now, please. Okay, this is the assignment. Now, according to what has been asked to you to figure out, you have to do it. Okay, and it's just about the present indefinite tense, the example of present indefinite tense and example of present continuous tense. So do it, I shall meet you in the next class and I'll give you the answer for that also. So till then, hashtag stay home, stay safe, God bless.